boys, I'm a cadet that just completed his course here. I've been asked to give you some tips on what you're up against. These tips are to clear up a lot of cockeyed notions that my class had, and probably some of you have, too. Now, uh, my first tip is, if you feel that you're about to throw up, throw up. Not now, you understand, but when you're up in a plane. The way you get the junk you do about what's going to happen to you while you're here, nobody's been able to find out. Now, some of you have been told that if you lose your lunch while flying, your instructor's going to hold it against you so you nearly choke yourself to death. Anyone can get sick in a plane if you jiggle them around enough, including the instructor, so you can forget that. There isn't a class that comes in here that isn't full of some of these nutty notions. So to help the real dummies, probably not you, uh, we'll start from the beginning. This is an airplane, and this is an instructor, and this is a student, or knucklehead. What do you think knucklehead is looking for? Well, he's trying to find out where the instructor keeps that sash weight that an instructor has for hitting a student over the noggin when he, the student, doesn't let go of the controls. Now, maybe this sash weight is built into the plane. The instructor could work it from a button on the dashboard. This is a dashboard. No button here is connected with a sash weight, blackjack, or brass knuckles. So you aren't going to be hit with a blunt instrument. That whole bugaboo about freezing at the controls that you've gotten from the comic strips is a myth. Freezing is purely metal. You just forget what you're going to do next, and the instructor reminds you calmly and through his teeth. This is a B-17. It's a very heavy plane. It weighs 24 tons. You need a big man to fly this, nine feet tall with lots of muscle. You'd think so, wouldn't you? This is Major Hewitt T. Wayless, considerably less than nine feet tall. He not only flew a flying fortress, but did it with two engines gone. The truth of the matter is that it takes more exertion, get this, to drive an automobile than it does to fly a plane in any normal maneuver. So you see, gents, even you little punks can fly the biggest planes. Uh, we will now discuss the great skill and talent involved in flying an airplane. What is an airplane? a brainless clump of metal. To make these nuts and bolts fly through the air, you must be a hell of a fellow. Let's see now. Here is the student's first five minutes at the controls. He means to keep the plane level. Straighten it out, straighten it out. Too much, too much. Well, that was a little wobbly, but Knucklehead was flying it all right. You notice it didn't fall down or anything. It was pretty good. The instructor's telling Bright Eyes to keep his hands in the air and to take his feet off the rudders. Now the instructor's setting the plane at a nice cockeyed angle. Now he's taking his feet off the rudder pedals. Well, look at that. It's a little embarrassing, isn't it? Here comes a little secret about a plane, my lads that flyers try to keep from the rest of the world. The damn thing flies better without you than with you. As soon as someone figures out how to turn the ignition on by itself, they're not going to need you at all. Planes are made to fly, and they fly. You only have to let them. You don't need brand new brain cells to be a pilot. Use your old ones. Watch some samples. Two geniuses approaching a ship. They stop and talk about relativity. Einstein there is tired. He leans against the propeller. What of it? It's his ship. He's not in it. Perfectly safe. Perfect. Yikes! Einstein, old boy, if you'd been a foot closer, you'd have been a head shorter. Did it ever occur to you that a mechanic might be inside the ship? We lose a lot of propellers that way. Never be this close, whether it's moving or not, because some very peculiar things can happen to you. As I could tell you about if I cared to. For some reason, as soon as you're in an airplane, you take leave of ordinary common sense. Here's an average knucklehead who's decided to turn to the right. Look at him. Head down, watching all the instruments, including some he doesn't have to watch, making up his mind to turn. Here he goes. Yep, there he goes. He almost went, taking another fellow with him. Couldn't he use enough common sense to look to the right when he's turning to the right? The Air Force has a simple slogan for this situation. Remember it. 
take it to heart. Keep your nose out of your behind. There's nothing holy about aviation. Don't accept instruction blindly as though it's gospel. Look for the common sense behind everything you do. For instance, pretty boy here has been issued a flying helmet. He's putting it on. Look at him struggle. It's a couple of sizes too small for that blockhead. Does it occur to him that it's too tight? No. It's something connected with aviation. Maybe you're supposed to be uncomfortable. In half an hour, he's going to have a hell of a headache. Let's go to the other extreme. A helmet that's too big. There's a hundred mile deal whipping around his ears. He can't understand why he's not hearing through his headset. Why doesn't Cookie use common sense? Would he in civilian life wear a hat like this? No. Or one like this? No. This is what he'd wear. I don't know. He looked better the other way. That's not as silly as it seems. Getting you to think for yourself is the biggest trick of all. There's a trick even of sitting in a plane, and this isn't it. Albert here is what he's called a locomotive engineer, having picked up this habit from his jalopy. Sit straight in a plane, straight in center, and you'll always have the nose of your ship headed where it should be. This is called Essing, because the pattern is the letter S. Do you know why it's done? Not superstition before you take off, but because this is what you see from the seat, which isn't much. And Essing lets you see where you're going. If you're depending on your brakes entirely here, you're a bum. And go slowly when you're taxiing. This isn't a car. A plane is made for flying, not Sunday driving. If you ask me what part of your whole training is most important, I'd say it was primary. Because that's where you get your real flying habits. Don't sit in class with your mouth open and let a lot of instruction pour in. That won't make you fly. As a matter of fact, you can't be taught to fly. Just shown. You teach yourself. And the sooner you get it in your head that you have to teach yourself, you won't pick up a magazine and read while you're waiting for your turn to fly. You'll be watching landings and turns and takeoffs to see what the other fellow's doing, right or wrong. Or you'll sneak a few minutes in a plane, even if it's just to sit. Right now, that plane is at a perfect three-point landing. Get used to the set of the ship at this angle. Get the feel of your fatting in that seat. You want the plane to fly as if it's part of you. Well, know it that well. You don't go fumbling around for your nose or your navel. Make it second nature to reach out and touch that altimeter. Here's where I can give you a little pep talk. But I'm not going to. You fellows are all anxious enough to fly or you wouldn't be here. You're all pretty much alike, too. You'd be surprised about that. I can tell how you're going to feel these next few months. First, you think you're going to be a hell of a flyer. You're cocky. Then you hit real experience, and down you go in the dumps. And you want to quit. Then you fly a little, just a beginner. And you think you're the hottest pilot since Doolittle. Remember this, boys, on the day you get your wings. A canary can do it better. You're lucky to get this course. Men learned to fly before there was enough flying knowledge in the whole world to write one textbook. And in planes they hoped would get off the ground. So you're in pretty good shape. Watch out for the wise guys. Don't let them send you out after a bucket of prop wash or nine feet of flight line or sell you tickets to the USO. The instructors are coming back. Give them a break. Keep them flying.